around Wisconsin's Green Bay, and I tell you one thing that's just exploded up here the last couple of years are just these whitefish bites. You know, 100 fish days, excellent eating fish, a fish that fights hard, and I'm looking forward to just kind of showcasing this opportunity because I think this is an awesome ice fishing opportunity that's blown up in popularity. This is a cool deal for ice fishing. <laughs> it's like a Green Bay bonefish, you know? <laughs> Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by Shields, Vexilar, Clam, K Drill, Ice Armor by Clam, Crestliner, North Dakota Tourism. Clam Pro Tackle, Bismarck Motor Company, Travel Manitoba, and Jason Mitchell Elite Series Fishing Rods. Well, we're on the Bay of Green Bay with Brett Alexander. I've been kind of watching this happen for a long time where Brett and a lot of these guys out here have really kind of pioneered some of this white fishing. And, and I tell you what, a cool opportunity because 10, 15 years ago, you know, hardly anybody even paid attention to white fish. And now they're this desirable, sought after fish that has really become popular. And so you look out here, all these fish houses are all fishing for white fish. And you're kind of one of the guys up here that is known for this. It's a pretty cool story, really. Yeah, you know, it started uh, probably about 15 years ago, you know, and the, the whitefish were always in deep water, and then they moved in shallower, and we started catching them while we were perch and walleye fishing. And then uh, we finally figured out that they were a great table fare and good to eat, and we started targeting them as, and putting our clients, you know, on whitefish, and it just exploded. I mean, I couldn't build ice houses fast enough for the demand I had back <laughs> well, in the day. Well, they're fun. I mean, you catch 50 to 100 fish in a day. Yeah. They fight hard. I mean, it's, I mean, what's there not to like? I mean, pretty cool, pretty cool opportunity for a lot of people. I've never done an episode or gone out and just targeted whitefish specifically. And so I've been watching what they've been doing on Green Bay here for quite a while and it just looks like a blast. You know, so finally I just had to come over here and do it. You know, and, and what's interesting is earlier this year on Facebook, you know, we just put a poll out, you know, as far as you know, just ask some of our viewers, you know, hey, where should we go fish? Where, what should we do this year that we haven't done before? And the Green Bay whitefish was something that came up quite a few times. I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, the people that come out here and do this, they love it. The area we're fishing, we're in Upper Door County up in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. And we're fishing out on Larson's Reef, it's called. It's a huge reef, it runs seven miles. We're out on the far outside outer break of the reef. Um, the reef itself is probably maybe a mile wide. So you can catch fish up on top of the reef, but I like to target the deeper edge that way on your bright sunny days and the days when there's a lot of noise, you're close to that deep edge where you can slide out to that 80, 90, 100 foot of water and continuously catch fish all day long. All right, so basically what you wanna do is run it all the way down to the bottom. Right there's the bottom. So I'll fine tune it so I've got a little drop of my angle with the rod and the rod, bo the bottom is right here. It's just a quick hop, hop, back down, hop, hop. If you're constantly hitting that bottom, what you'll do is with that jig hitting the bottom, it'll create a little dust cloud down there. It pulls them in, they think the gobies or the blood worms are working at bottom, so they'll see that dust cloud and they'll come in and investigate. How's he feel? Pretty good one. All right. Yeah, when you get these on too, you gotta remember you're in deep water. I like to just take them slow. They do head shake and rip pretty hard and they have softer mouths, so if you horse on them and try to reel them fast, you'll rip the hooks out of a lot of them. Nice one. You can see you eat that big plastic. So they're thinking that's a goby and they're sucking it right off the bottom. But that's a pretty nice size fish for here on Green Bay, about two and a half, three pounder. So that one we're gonna keep. 
These things are super good eating. Um, you can bake them, deep fry them. Um, they're really good smoked. A lot of people get them smoked, so I myself like them baked, so I'm gonna keep that one for dinner. So basically what I do when I'm tying up my rigs is I'll put a barrel swivel, a small barrel swivel, and you want about a 24 inch liter coming off of that fluorocarbon, uh, six to eight pound. You just take a small hook, this is a number eight, and slide up about maybe about 18 inches, and I'm gonna just tie an, your basic overhand knot, and I'm gonna tie three of those right in the same spot. And that acts as your stopper for your hook. So basically it'll free slide from your barrel swivel down to the knot and it's going to stop. It's almost like a drop shot rig basically. And you can tie one, you can put another one like right in here. I'm just going to tie one on this rig and then we're going to put our bottom jig with our, with our plastic. I like to use like a quarter ounce weight. Sometimes if you get a lot of current I'll go a little bit heavier. And then any small like dark plastics that look like a goby. So this is actually uh, a 2.8, I believe, Kitek um, swim bait, but any plastics will work. And that's what the rig looks like. So you got your slider hook and down to your jig and your plastic. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by these industry leaders. A Vexilar is responsible for more fish being caught than any other piece of equipment you could buy. You know what, fishing lures and gadgets have come and gone over the last 60 years. But Vexlar's mission statement has been true, helping anglers catch more fish. Vexlar is the gold standard in sonar performance and reliability in flasher sonar technology. Your ice fishing adventure begins and ends with a Vexlar by your side. Happy 60th Vexlar! Yeah, what's my favorite series of hubs? The Clam C Series shelters work best for us. Hey, what's our favorite ice sub shelter? The X Series from Clam Outdoor. Yeah. Choose the hub shelter that's right for you at Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. Introducing the Rise Float Suit with Motion Float Technology. Breathable, waterproof, secure, and all the features that make the difference. Waterproof cell phone pocket, rapid drain system, and maximum flexibility. Fish with security in the Rise Float Suit from Ice Armor by Clam. Rise above. Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. There we go. Big one. Got a pile of them down there now. One thing with those slider hooks too, you want to try to guide it up the center of the hole so your slider hooks don't catch on the ice. You hear them croaking there. These, uh, the whitefish can actually, it's one of the only fish that can burp their air. So if you pull them up out of deep water and you catch a small one, you can still release it because they can bleed their air. It's not like a lot of fish where if you catch them out of 40 or 50 feet, um, their air bladder blows out. and then you gotta either fizz them or they're gonna die, but these can burp air. You'll see bubbles actually come up when you're reeling them up. 
The best part about this bird is you have 65 feet to enjoy this. Right? Yeah, you got a good, <laughs> a good long fight. Whenever you can catch a lot of fish that are 15 inches or bigger that fight like this, I mean, this is a good way to spend a day as far as I'm concerned. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Face only a mother could love, huh? <laughs> uh, Brett's got one over there. They fight hard, don't they? Yeah, they pull hard. People don't realize how how fat, they're super, super fast. They're like bullets in the water. But they put up a good tussle. Do you keep most of them that you catch, Brett, or do you, can you release them? Um, I'll release some of the smaller ones. Ooh, that's a nice one. But I love eating them, so I, I mean, I'll usually keep some to eat, and I cook them about once or twice a week during the winter. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be surprised how good they are. I like them better than walleye when you eat them fresh. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty amazing eating. What's a big white fish out here? Uh, these are actually pretty good size here. About the biggest you'll catch them is about 24, 25 inches. Okay. I think the biggest one ever I've seen that a customer caught was 26. Some places they'll get bigger, but here it's... I think it's what they're eating. They just don't get as big as some of the other places, but. Yeah. Now you're dialed in. Oh, that's fun. So cool ball is just this tiny little light bite, and then when you lay into them, that's when the fireworks go off. What I find kind of interesting as well is just how much this has blown up. I mean, 30 years ago, I don't think whitefish were appreciated very much. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it started out about, oh, maybe 12, 15 years ago, we were mainly guiding for walleyes and perch out here, and we started catching a lot of whitefish mixed in while we were out jigging for walleyes. So a light bulb kind of went out in my head, and I decided I was gonna dissect it and figure out how to, how to catch a lot of them. And, um, I watched them on camera, we were catching them on spoons at first, and I was watching them on camera and they are always hitting my little barrel swivel, so that made me decide to put those slider hooks up there to try that. And that, we ended up times in our catch by about 10 once we figured out that technique. And then, uh, then I started guiding for them, and my business just exploded because there were so many people coming from like the Chicago area because they knew that the whitefish were very good to eat and that we could catch a lot of them here. So it, it was, uh, it's been a good ride for the last 12 years. <laughs> I think that's a cool story. Take a fish that's abundant and bites and fights and great to eat. What's there not to love? There you go. Feel like a good one? Yeah, it's a nice one. All right. Oh yeah. yeah that's a real big one. They're just so slippery and strong, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> What's nice too is using these plastics so you don't go through many baits. <laughs> yeah. Electronics are definitely key out here too, doing this. It's a lot of times you get in a spot and you can know pretty quick if they're there or not just by watching your electronics. They're always on the bottom. Once in a while you'll see them two, you know, one, two, three feet off the bottom, but 
Yeah, they're definitely cruising the bottom looking for food. One down there waiting for me. There we go. <laughs> that fish is like right on the bottom. We're talking bottom, we're talking like in the bottom three or four inches. fish are just so slippery. Just a fun bite. Just a tick. <laughs> Look at that little mouth I and mean, you really stick your pinky in that mouth. It's just amazing <laughs> what kind of a predator, you know, when you look at this here, this jig here we're using, there can be a lot of current in here so we're using it quarter ounce jig, just a T-Tech paddle tail on there, which that imitates the goby which these fish are feeding on, and then you've got the sliders up above which basically imitates the bloodworms which these fish also feed on. Kind of a one-two punch. Obviously for fish in this deep of water too you got to have something with weight on it to get down and so really a effective way to fish out here for sure. That's on a fluorocarbon leader. Then we're running braided line, basically just a 36 inch walleye rod, but braided line, you know, when you're 60 feet or deeper of water, is crucial for just detecting the bite and setting the hook. These fish are one of the spookiest fish I've ever seen in my life. If you're constantly driving around the area you're fishing, you're probably not gonna catch any. You can be actually being like 80 to 90 feet and drive one of these machines up to a shack. And if you have a camera down, you'll see the whitefish just blow out of there because they're so jittery and spooky to the noise. So it's very critical to keep the noise down when you're fishing. Um, drill all your holes ahead of time and then just keep the machines you know, parked and, and walk when you want to move around. If you look down here, you'll see we got a big line of all our shacks down the edge of this reef. So basically what I'll do is I'll put one shack up shallower in like that 50 to 60 foot, and then I'll have a deeper shack out in 80 where we, when we gotta move people, we can slide them in and out pretty quick and keep them in the houses. But a lot of days if I can't, oop, if I can't get them going in the shallower water, I'll slide out deep and I can get them to eat out deep. Never gets old. <laughs> it's really an incredible resource and you look at how many fish you can catch and how abundant they are. Oh, on the slider hook. That's my first one on the slider today. It's funny, these things all of a sudden, everything will be on the bottom, jig with the bigger plastic, and then they'll totally switch and everything will be on the slider hooks. It all depends on how they're feeding and what they're eating. Just a hard digging fish. I think this is just a cool story how you guys figured out a fish. Just a neat story of appreciating a fish that was never appreciated before and kind of making it famous. Lord knows it's fun. Look at that, that's a 36 inch medium heavy action rod and that fish is just digging. Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Green Bay bonefish, you know? <laughs> Might have to replace my plastic finally. I don't know how many fish I've caught on it, but that's just gorgeous. Dinner is served. <laughs> Looking forward to eating these. They're good. You know, that's the thing is, you know, you keep 10 fish, I mean, these are just 
excellent size for eating. So, I mean, if it's a deal where you want to come out and catch fish and, and, you know, save some fish for a meal and, you know, it's an abundant resource. And so these fish are just tailor made for that. Twenty years ago, you'd never even catch these white fish in shallow. They were all real deep water, feeding on uh, just like biomass stuff. Yeah. And their food source, once the zebra mussels got into the Great Lakes, their food source was depleted from the zebra mussels eating everything. Um, so they either were going to die out and uh, be gone, but they adapted and they figured out that they could eat gobies and bloodworms and survive off of that. So they totally changed their eating habits. And That's then they pretty came in fascinating. Shallow. Not all species are that versatile. <laughs> you know what? Oh, there he is. I just missed one. You got one? All right. I got them too. Oh, <laughs> Doubles, huh? Off. It's kind of fun that you got to take your time, you know what? Get to enjoy it more. Yeah. You actually got time to take your Vexler out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> It should be getting pretty close. Oh yeah. That fish hit the slider. Just a XL Mackie minnow on that. I just pinched it in half. That's the, the bottom pounder. <laughs> That's what we've caught every fish on so far, but about one, two punch. Now it's all you, bud. I got my 10. Uh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. When you just wear yourself out and catch several fish that fight like this. <laughs> That is good stuff. Look at that. That's a great fish. The action is the attraction. Look at that. That is a great white fish. Just a cool, cool fishing experience. That gives me 10 fish. That didn't take long, Brett. It was fun to have you out on the ice. This might be the quickest show we've shot all winter, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything has been as advertised. So. Yeah, it's a pretty good fishery up here. It's been really cool to watch how this has blown up. You know, I, I love it whenever a fish that maybe doesn't get a lot of notoriety, maybe doesn't get a lot of attention, all of a sudden, for whatever reason, however it happens, somebody somehow somewhere makes something cool. You know, we saw it with the eel pout in Minnesota, we're seeing it with the white fish out here, you know, a fish that, you know, people never paid attention to all of a sudden are <laughs> this desirable sought after fish. And I think that's cool. And the other thing about that is that it spreads out the pressure, you know, not everybody can, you know, catch limits of 12 inch crappies out of the same hole all winter long and expect good fishing, you know? And so when stuff like this pops up, when there's abundance of fish, it's big water, you know, I think that's really good for the industry.